Howdy there neighbors, Ian with E-Trailer here. Today we're going to be looking at the Kurt adapter uh, for the Tecantra brake controllers. Let's get into the features and then we'll look at the install right after that. We've already got this hooked to the Tecantra brake controller here, but I wanted to explain how we got to this point. Uh, the vehicle that we're working on today does have the tow package, so there wasn't anything as far as hard wiring in any other system. Uh, there's just a plug up underneath the push to release here, uh, that lever for your parking brake. You'll see there's a, a bundle of wires and then right above that the plug already ready for the brake controller. And we've used that harness, uh, that adapter harness that's going to be another part that you may need to come to this end here where it's, it's normally meant for Kurtz, uh, but the adapter here is going to be what will make it so it can hook to the Tecantra brake controller. So we've already got this hooked up, but I wanted to kick back to a little footage we got from the full install of the brake controller here. It'll show how those plugs are gonna connect and how we're gonna get that up to the brake controller from the adapter harness that we put directly onto the vehicle. This particular harness is gonna be a two foot harness does have our end here that will plug directly into the vehicle and then the opposite plug here is going to plug into our brake controller and hopping right into the install of our harness here we're going to come underneath the dash there are just two push pins uh, one left and one right that are going to get popped out you may need to pick up a push pin removal tool uh, off the website as well or Sometimes you can get them off the flat head, just kind of slowly prying those out of there. And then once we've got these push pins removed here, we're going to pull this out just enough we can access this little light uh, for the foot well here. It's just a squeeze type plug. You may have to push a little pressure in and then back out and it should just come undone. And we'll set that off to the side for now. And this is where that custom plug is really gonna come into play. It's just ready for us to go right above this main set of harness. You'll see there's another gray connector that's gonna allow for that to just slide in. You'll wanna make sure your push uh, release here is on top. And we'll just carefully plug that in. And once that's plugged in, you'll hear that little click and then you can kinda of just give it a little tug to make sure that's in there correctly. We're gonna go ahead and get that zip tied out of the way. I've got one spot here. There's, it looks like a little indicator light or something like that that's got a bracket. So I've just got that one zip tie on it. Get that up there nice and snug. And then I'm gonna leave this loose for now because we're gonna be mounting the brake controller up in this area. One thing I wanted to make sure to mention is since this airbag is here, you can get your hand up over the top of the uh, vents that are under there and that airbag assembly so that way you can triple check where you're going to be putting this. You wouldn't want to puncture any wires or any lines or run into this airbag accidentally when you're putting the brake controller up. So now that we've got that zip tied out of the way we're going to go ahead and get this adapter put in. Uh, this end is meant for the Kurt uh, brake controllers but with this adapter we're going to be able to hook up to the Tecantra just another plug and play connector there like it was up at the beginning. And now we've got our end for the Tecantra brake controller opposed to the Kurt. We'll just go ahead and get our bracket mounted up here and I'll show you how that's done. I did hold our bracket up and just made a couple marks where I'm gonna be putting our screws. The kit's gonna come with a couple just pointier looking screws. They're not self tappers. And in my opinion, I'd prefer self tappers, but you get what you get on that. I've got a couple with me uh, just to be able to show what you do with the hardware that comes with it. I've already marked the holes and we're going to pre-drill those just a little bit. So those screws start nice and easy. We've already checked behind to make sure there's nothing there that I'm going to be hitting as far as wires or any lines just run these far enough that it gets through the dash and we can put our screws in. Go ahead and get our bracket mounted up. Uh, there's just two screws that are going to slide through. You do have your adjustability left and right and no other adjustability on that. Some of the other options are going to have a little bit more 
Um, I don't feel like with this mount that it's really necessary. And just getting both of those screws snug down here. Oh. Then to mount the P3 here, we're just gonna slide this into the bracket. Might have to apply a little pressure on the sides. Uh, one thing I did mention is it comes with these little screws that are gonna go in each side. You may wanna run those down because this inside back bracket, um, I can even pull that off to show you here. This inside back bracket from the factory is not gonna come with any threading in these holes. Uh, so just to make it a little easier on you once you've got it lined up in the bracket, just go ahead and thread those little bolts in beforehand and then that'll make it to where there's threading there and makes the alignment uh, just a little bit easier once we're getting the bracket on. Let's take the end from our adapter here to the end of the control unit. Again, plug and play. So. Nice and easy install. Looks like we've already got it talking to us, which is a good sign. And then we'll snap it into place on the mount. We've got that lower panel put into place. So I do see here that we've already got our screen lit up. So that's a good sign that we've got power coming to the unit. And we've got a tester hooked up to the rear of the vehicle. You can use your own trailer. Uh, just to make sure all the lights are gonna function once you're hooked up. And now that we've confirmed that we've got good power at the controller, I'm just gonna run through all the check tests there. Uh, you'll be able to see on that box that we're gonna run through, uh, starting with our brakes, which should have a reaction there. And then I'll get the vehicle started and we'll run through the lights. So with the brakes no longer on, I'm gonna go ahead and run our left turn signal. And then our right turn signal. And then just to make sure, I'm gonna turn those marker clearance lights on as well. And those off. And that'll do for our look at an installation of the Kurt adapter for Takancha brake controllers. Again, I think this is a great option if you don't wanna have to tie into anything on the vehicle as far as splicing into wires. Uh, very easy plug and play installation. Something that can be done in a very short amount of time. So if you're looking at Takancha brake controllers, this is gonna be probably the easiest installation out of any of the options we've got. Uh, other than that, my name is Ian with eTrailer, and thank you for watching.